Today's video, guys, is all about the Western Mediterranean Greeks added into RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6, Emporian Acragas and Taras. This is taken from a longer interview deep dive that I did with Mausolos, one of the lead historians on RIS. So please check that out in the description below and enjoy. Yeah. So Torion was basically chosen um, mostly for, for its location, obviously, because it's the only Greek faction we have on the Iberian Peninsula, even though in its location in modern day Ampurias, and I apologize to all Spanish watchers <laughs> butchering the pronunciation. Uh, Don't worry, Catalonia I'm going to be, just... be butchering a lot of Greek pronunciation, so sorry to all you ancient Greek stands <laughs> and yeah, you Mausolos yeah, as well, but <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think people are going to uh, write letters to complain. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's a modern day Ampurias in, in Catalonia. And um, of course, it's it's on the edge of the Iberian Peninsula. It's not very deep in. But if you go down the coast uh, near modern day Valencia, you would find Hemeroscopeion and Akaloike, two other Greek settlements which were somewhat connected. Yeah, we, you can see Hemeroscopeion there because it's yeah. owned by the Greek city-states faction, which we also brought back so that the remaining rebel Greek cities can be differentiated. Akraloike is just to the west of it, modern Alicante, and um, which many holiday goers will probably know. Yeah. And Akraloike and Alicante, it is uh, given to the rebels so that, um, yeah, the remaining Greek rebel cities are split up. So we have the Greek city-states faction as a super faction as it used to be. And then, uh, yeah, Akraloike is given to the rebels. So, yeah, they won't always group their troops together because rebels like yeah. to do that only if it makes sense is there an alliance so emporion um the name emporion is actually means trade port and it was a mm. very common form of greek settlement emporii as the plural is um was spread all over the mediterranean and often a settlement like massalia next to emporion developed out of an initial um uh, yeah that the, the there was initially an Emporion there in Massalia, for instance, and it later developed to a Polis city-state. Yeah. And uh, Massalia was founded by the Phocaeans from Western Asia Minor, flat, flat from the Persians in the mid-6th century BC. Mm. And Emporion was also um, founded in this context, either from Phocaea itself or from the Massalios from Massalia. And... Um, its history um, is, of course, very important as a trade settlement in Iberia. And, of course, Greek goods from Greece were exported all the way here. It was not really a political power, we have to say, but Massalia yeah. has a bit of a fan favorite for many. <laughs> and many asked us to add Emporion, so um, we did that as well. They have one unit, which you're going to show, the Emporionite hoplites, based on a depiction we had Um but yeah, and the, uh, otherwise we don't know too much about the military. As you can see, the unit description is still missing. Well, we're going to get to that. Yeah, It has a nice golden shining shield, as we found on the, on the depiction from Emporium from this time period. And this one has the hat of Medusa. Um, Are you sure that's so, yeah, not Shia um, LaBeouf? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't. I haven't seen him since Indiana Jones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a vampire yeah. that's been living for thousands of years, apparently. And uh, yeah. this was the first depiction really? ever ever found of him on the uh, Emporianite <laughs> Hoplites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's pretty much what we can say on Emporion. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be good for everyone who plays in Iberia to have a Greek faction there. And of course, it can connect with Massalia. And it starts ally to Massalia as oh, well, cool. I think, which makes sense. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So let's move on slightly east down to Sicily, to Akragas. So no longer is Syracuse alone as the Greeks on Sicily. Akragas yeah. is here now as well, which is pretty cool. Bordering Carthage, which for them... It's probably quite scary, but uh, <laughs> they're down here on Sicily. So in terms of the, uh, you know, why they've been added and, and their significance, do you want to just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, as you can see, Akragas uh, has a crap, which is from one of its coins as the faction symbol. 
This yeah. and the fact that it's probably in one of the most challenging positions of the whole campaign mm. has already made um, the beta testers who are allowed to actually play it. And of course, some people will figure out how to unlock them anyway, um, play reflections. Yeah. Um, yeah, has made it a bit of a favorite with some of the testers because it's just so, so damn and difficult with Carthage on the <laughs> west, the on the east, and the Romans about to arrive. Um, it quickly rose to fame in the 6th century BC, not long after its foundation, Akragas, as the home of the tyrant Phalaris, who, okay. among other things, invented the torture instrument known as the Brazen Bull. And okay. then later, it was under other tyrants, was to Teron and his family in the 5th century, who were allies of Syracuse, and together with them defeated the Carthaginians at Himera in 480 BC on the northern end of the island. <laughs> and it was a great island, uh, a great fortress, but at 406 BC. Um, it was besieged by the Carthaginians who wanted revenge for 480 and after a year-long siege it fell in 405 and was sacked oh, and then okay. suffered much um, afterwards and in 270 BC Akragas is populated once again but it now inclines towards Carthage and it would be taken by both sides during the First Punic War. Mm. So um, that goes to show <laughs> Well, a difficult position it is in, but people who visited Sicily will remember the great temples at Agrigento, modern Akragas. In Latin, it's Agrigentum, as you can also see on the map, and the valley yeah. of temples there is famous. So, um, yeah, it's, it, was fa it was a big city and it's famous for its tyrants. So, yeah. why not edit? So, because the position is just crazy. Yeah, uh, I think you, you like. You have completed being a tyrant if you're known for having a torture instrument made for you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that is di yeah. that is Dictator 101. Like, <laughs> what the hell? That's crazy. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, Akragas, uh, pretty cool nation right down here on the south of Sicily. Like you've said, it's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, and like I say about the unplayable nations, I said it last week, guys. I'm going to do a video showing you how to unlock all these unplayable nations in the files. The reason why they're not just playable is because, you know, not a load of, uh, you know, they haven't been added the unique flavor as all the other nations, and they're tiny little states. They're not, you know, really significant states like the Antigonids or Epirus or something like that. Um, and it would just clutter the whole, <laughs> the whole of the uh, campaign starting screen if there were, you know, 50 of these tiny small states there. But I will show you how to make them playable so if you do want to play as Akragas basically doing a Ryuku world conquest equivalent from EU4 to uh, this game then you can do and uh, I will show you how but yeah cool so with Akragas they have a couple of uh, uh, a couple of unique units the Sicel Peltophoroi the Sicel Theroporoi and the Peloponnese and yeah. Hoplites as well uh, and we've actually shown all those before in uh, in the Syracuse roster I believe apart from the Peloponnese and Hoplites uh, but yeah, they've got a few unique units. So next one is actually an emergent faction, guys. It is Taras, which is pretty much Tarentum, isn't it? Uh, it's an emergent faction, and it's pretty famous, to be honest. Uh, so do you want to talk about Tarentum a little bit, Miles Lawson, and the history of Tarentum? <clears throat> yeah, as you already said, Taras in Greek is Tarentum, and Latin Taranto in modern Italian. Um, I don't think... Um, yeah, it needs much of an introduction. As you said, it was one of the major um, Greek cities in Magna Grecia, or Magna Grecia, as the Italians say, um, the Greeks in the West. And there it is um, one of the most powerful cities, especially in the 4th century BC, when it was the leader of the Italian League. Mm. But after that, it had much trouble with its neighbors, um, the different peoples of the region, the Apigians, the Mesapians, the Semnites, the Lucians, and Brutians. Yeah. And, of course, for several times, they called Sparta and Epirus for help. For help. Um, also, Syracuse in 298 BC helped them against the barbarians. Yeah. Um, and, the, and they had a friendship treaty with Rome. Um, but in 282 BC, the Romans betrayed the friendship treaty, and then <laughs> famously, Pyrrhus of Epirus was called to Italy to fight for the Tar Tarentines and fight for them. He did, but eventually, he found that Sicily was more interesting, and then he returned, <laughs> and he just couldn't make up his mind what to do. And then he went back to Greece and he left the Tarentines alone, and they fell under Roman rule in 272 BC. Well, that's only two years before our campaign starts, so there's a possibility here for. Um, 
independence yet again. And of course, the famous Tarantine cavalry, which became the name for yeah. kind of um, skirmisher mercenary cavalry all around the Greek world, um, originated from here. And um, Pyrrhus also armed the locals as phalangites, as the so-called um, Leucaspides, the white shields, yeah. which are subsumed in the upper road Rosta under the Deuteroi, the second ones, so to say. Uh, which I think is a name from from other mods as well. Um, so the Tarantines will have these these unique units. Um, if they do spawn, or if you play them eventually, um, during the Second Punic War, they did actually go over to Hannibal and held out four years. Um, and there was a lot of conflict oh, and bad. sacking of the city again, and they resisted the Romans for quite a while. But um, yeah, eventually it was actually a nice holiday home for Horace, the Roman poet in the Imperial period. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, pretty, so that's pretty, our history. Yeah, it's a pretty famous, when? famous place. If you know much about Pyrrhus, like like you said, Bowser Lost, like if, if anyone at home yeah. uh, is interested in Pyrrhus quite a bit, then uh, Tarentum's kind of the, uh, the start of it all, really, <laughs> uh, yeah. for the middle part of Pyrrhus and the end of his life, really. So... Uh, yeah, very interesting and interesting place. Uh, but I think in this region as well, people can AOR recruit the Italiote Hoplites and the Italiote Epibati. Now, we're not going to reveal what the exact yeah. method of AOR recruitment is going to be, guys, uh, just because um, it's not fully implemented yet and there's still debates going on. But there will be a video, as I keep saying on this sort of stuff. <laughs> There is a video coming up about this stuff, so uh, there's lots of videos coming up on the updates, guys. So make sure you do subscribe, make sure you do like these videos, because like we say, it's RAS weekends. Every weekend leading up to release, we're going to have two videos on different stuff on the mod. Deep dives like this, and I think they, um, it's really good to get this uh, perspective from the mod team as well. Uh, but let's go up to Ancon next, which is over here, isn't it? Ancon. Um, which is not a faction, but there are a couple of units, just to uh, just to let you all know. We've got the Anconitan Archers and the Anconitan Hoplites. I know I've butchered the pronunciation of that, uh, but you can get some special AOR Greek units in there as well. Um, so I think that's everything from the Western Mediterranean. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for that, Malzoff. That was honestly so interesting. Uh, really in depth on all those factions, and I think everyone can really appreciate the amount of historical knowledge and reasoning that's gone into all these factions and everything that's in the mod as well. Yeah, thank you for having me, and thank you guys for watching, and guys and girls, I should say, and everyone. Um, we hope you enjoyed the video, and there will be more RAS content in the coming weeks on Red Z's channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can tell you that. And uh, we are building towards the, the next release, of course, of our IS 0.6. And as you can see, um, we've made great progress with the factions, the units, and the map, which is at this moment being completely finished. So um, there's going to be so much new stuff you won't believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So stay tuned, guys. Make sure you do subscribe. Make sure you do like this video if you've appreciated. Uh, appreciated it because there might be another couple of videos coming with Miles Loss uh, in the future as well. So uh, keep that in mind um, and make sure you check out the Greek AOR units and the uh, and the map showcase if you've not seen the map showcase as well. And stay tuned because as I've said already, every weekend, guys, is going to be a in-depth uh, development update on version 0.6 all the way to release. So every weekend, you're going to be full of RAS content just like this. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks once again to the mod team, especially um, Mausolos. So thank you very much uh, for watching, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video. Bye-bye.